So today we're doing a little test cut and demonstration with the Forest Manufacturing Model 480i horizontal blade traveling table bandsaw. Um, if you have not seen an introduction video on this machine before, I'll give you the quick tour. As the name suggests, bandsaw with a horizontal blade. The blade cuts in a horizontal plane, like if you want to take sheets off a block of material or lots of other applications. The blade height above the table surface is adjustable. On this machine, we have it set up as a nominal zero to 48 inches above the table surface, actuality more like 50 inches. Then you have a, what we call a vertical throat or clearance of 19 inches. This one does come with a manual head raise lower, basically on the far side over there, it's got a hand crank. Turn it up and down with a little electronic digital readout to tell you where you are. The readout can be reset to zero if you want to say make a cut, zero it, and then know you're moving one inch up or down. It's got that for you. Um, this particular machine has been upgraded to a five horsepower blade drive motor. The, the blade speed is fixed on this machine at about 3,100 feet per minute. We do offer as an option variable blade speed drive, but most of my customers are cutting things with a pretty reliable cut characteristics and that 3,000, 3,100 3, foot per minute blade speed is very reliable. This machine uses a pneumatic blade tensioning system, not really available, it's on the back side here. Um, has a few options, first off it allows us to rapidly and accurately and repeatedly set the blade tension. The blade tension is controlled um, by a pressure regulator. You need 120 PSI plant air, but then the pressure regulator down rates that to say 50 PSI. The machine comes with a chart that shows you blade sizes against pressures and the resulting blade tension. We're running this right now at about 20,000 PSI blade tension. Uh, the pneumatic tension gives us another couple of features. We can, uh, first off, very quickly change the blade. So, here is the tensioning wheel. It will reach around behind back and detension the blade. Moves out of the way, slackens the blade, take the old blade off, put the new blade on, retension the blade, and you know the blade tension is set correctly. Contrast that with a screw over spring mechanism as is common on smaller saws and some of our smaller saws. This is a much faster, more accurate way to do the job. The pneumatic blade tension system allows us to use a blade breakage detector. If the blade breaks while you're cutting, the machine shuts off. Blade drive turns off and if the table's advancing, that will stop advancing. We also have a low air pressure switch on this machine, so if for whatever reason the airline gets disconnected or you just forgot to turn the compressor on that morning, the machine won't run. Uh, or if it is running, it turns off. I'm going to walk the camera around to show you the control panel. I apologize if I cause a little seasickness here. So this machine can be operated from two places. Have a set of controls here on the machine face, and we also have a handheld pendant. So predictably, we do have a disconnect, fuse disconnect in this machine. Saw start and saw stop. Tension and detension selector switch. Blade fault, so if the blade is broken, or if you do not have sufficient air pressure, or if the blade is detension, if a blade fault, you cannot start blade drive motor. E-stop, predictably, stops everything. Table forward and table reverse. So table forward, also known as the advanced direction. That's the direction you go to make a cut. Table return, brings back the home position. Table stop. The way this works is a little bit, uh, I'm not gonna say tricky, it's a little neat actually. Table forward. If you are not running the blade motor, but you want to advance the table, press and hold. As soon as you release the table forward button, the table stops. If you are running the saw motor, so you press saw start, saw blade is running, you're going to cut, press and release table forward and it will continue running until you either stop the machine or it hits the end of travel. We do this such that you don't have the continuous operation 
when the blade motor is not running, such that you don't run the workpiece into the blade if the blade is not running, possibly damaging the workpiece or the blade or both. But you may want to be able to position the workpiece or do maintenance work on the machine with the blade not running, so we give you the ability to position the table in the forward direction even if the blade is not running by pressing and holding this button. Table reverse, table return direction is always a continuous press and release and it keeps going until you either stop it or it hits its end of travel. Motor fault, the table drive is controlled by a VFD. If it faults out for whatever reason, we also have the um, blade motor contactor wired here. Laser, the customer didn't pay for this option, sorry. And reverse speed. So the table return speed is here. So that's the table the speed the machine's table will go from after a cut to getting ready to make a new cut. That pretty much always gets left at 100%. Um, you can turn it down, I don't know why you would. The table advance speed is mounted on this pendant. So this duplicates the important controls. You can start and stop the blade drive motor here, table forward, reverse, and table stop with the same logic as these buttons. Uh, again, a feature this customer did not pay for. And the table advance direction is controlled here by a potentiometer on the bottom of the pendant. It's protected by a little shield, so when you drop it on the floor, you don't break that potentiometer. The thinking there is that the operator may want to use this handheld remote, walk around the machine, and control the cut process, including the table advance speed, while watching it um, being cut from any angle. So this gives you the ability to walk around and do that. Quick look inside of our panel here. I'm basically showing off because I think the uh, panels are quite pretty. My guy who wires these up is a little OCD, and that's exactly what you want for a panel guy. Fuse disconnect, uh, separate disconnect for the VFD. Um, control voltages are fused. We use a, it's a mini PLC, maybe called a smart relay to control machine functions. It is programmed. Um, it includes uh, indication of all the input and output statuses. So if you do have a fault, it's really quite easy to chase it down. VFD obviously, fan cooled. VFD speed. So this machine is currently set up to run at about three inches per second. Um, based on a VFD speed. So the base speed of the blade of the table drive motor is 60 hertz. It is a high spec motor. It can over speed to about three times that. Don't really recommend going that high. But what I've got done right now is I have it set to run at a maximum speed of about 90 hertz. So three inches per second. If you want to run faster than that, you can. Usually you don't need to. The speed range is about 50 to one. So when you increase your maximum speed, you also sometimes, depending on how the, how the machine's feeling, increase your minimum speed. The minimum speed is like 0 0.02, 0 0.03 inches per second. So really quite slow. And a lot of my customers are cutting materials that cut that slowly. Um, today, we had to test cut a big piece of foam. I'll move the camera back around so we can view the cut process. Zoom this in a bit. <clears throat> so I have a potential customer who wants to cut this foam. Uh, pretty high density, um, much more rigid than I would expect from look from feeling how much it weighs, but they have. Um, cut out shapes. I don't know if they're water jet or laser or how they cut this out. I believe these are uh, inserts like you go in a toolbox or a case. They have, uh, I don't know if they die cut or probably too big for a die cut, but maybe laser to water jet out these pieces out of a thick piece. And they want to be able to cut this down. The potential customer is a candidate for one of our smaller, less expensive saws. This thing would be way overkill for the application. 
um, they don't have to spend this much money. But I have this machine available for a test cut, so what's we're going, what we're going to use. To help restrain the workpiece, I've added a temporary metal ledge here to keep the material getting, from getting pulled off the table this direction, and a back fence to keep it from getting pushed off the back. So what I'll do here, <clears throat> I'm going to advance the workpiece up to the blade, then I'll set the blade height. The way I normally do these things when I'm uh, being very careful, and I only have the one workpiece to play with today, so I am being very careful. I'll start the speed at zero, press and hold the forward button, and then slowly increase the speed. and then decrease it to get it just up there against the blade so I can see what I'm doing. Then over here, turn the hand crank, set the blade height, and I'm gonna take like three quarters of an inch out of this thing. Back it up just a touch. Now again, to emphasize, I have not cut this material before. I don't know how quickly or slowly it's gonna take it. And I'm also um, still figuring out what the right blade is. I'm gonna start with a blade I know will cut it, but I don't know how clean a surface it will give me. So this is a one inch wide, three tooth per inch scallop, pardon me, one inch wide, three tooth per inch, three tooth per inch, hook tooth style blade. I know it'll cut it, might make kind of an ugly cut, I don't know yet. If this goes well, I'll switch blades and try some other blades, see how well they work out. But I'm gonna start with a blade that I know will work, and then I'll get more adventurous from there. So I will set my table speed to zero, start the blade drive, and stay kind of clear of the machine when you're doing this. Start the blade drive. Start the table moving forward. Now that the blade is running, I don't have to hold the forward button. Maybe get up there a little more quickly. And again, I'm gonna do this very slowly out of an abundance of caution. Once you know what you're doing with this material machine and everything, you're gonna speed this up quite a bit. I don't know yet. Okay, fighting in. No trouble at all. Increase my speed a bit. Sure, fine, no trouble at all. What I did not do that I should have done was hook up a dust collection system. So I'm moving a little dust here. I should have hooked up my dust collection system. It's cut this stuff great. I'm gonna give it some more beans here. That's about one inch per second right there. I'll give it some more. One and a half inch per second. Two inch per second, taking it just fine. No trouble at all. I'm not gonna wait for it to stop. There we go. Go collect the cut piece. Well, the, presumably this is the idea, but the cut pieces are now just falling right out. So here is your cut edge. Here is your virgin edge. A little bit of dust, not bad at all. The surface quality is actually quite good. 
I'll put some measurements on this, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to find that that is a nice consistent thickness. We didn't have any variation. Interesting shape. I kind of wonder what tool goes there. So that is an introduction. Model 480i from Forest Manufacturing. We have lots of variations on this. We can make it wider, taller, longer table, precision table tracking. If you like, we'll paint it pink for you, but we will question your taste. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to call us or email us here at Forest Manufacturing. Thank you.